vibes. Really nice and calm. Two very different vibes. Hello. I had to give myself that vibe because yeah. I'm in your vibe. Yeah. Chill. <laughs> So right. I had to like counter that with a wow, yes. wow, crazy vibe. You Episode know how that goes. 518. Yeah, sometimes you have to like will yourself into like exuberance. Yeah. It's like the, the pencil test, you know, yeah. the thing with the, yeah. the, you put the pencil in your mouth and then it makes you smile and then it shows that you have an increased or like a high uh, elevated mood. Yeah. yeah. That's what you're doing. Yeah. It's like the victory thing. Yes. Yeah. Right. Hard to get into an elevated mood these days. What's the matter? Like. What's he, what's stuck in your craw? What? Oh, I love when you say that. <laughs> it's just such a cute expression. What is it? Um, uh, you know just, what? I I I feel. Do you have those days or weeks or months or whatever it is where it just feels like you keep saying to yourself, "Okay, let me just get through this day, and then we'll yes. be good. Let me just get through this week, and then yep. we'll be good." Yeah, uh, that is like wh- where we are right now. Like. So there's a lot mm. of like set me saying that to myself and then waiting for that. But, you know, I, I, I was thinking about this a lot after we read the book, The Power of Habit for uh, book club last month. It was just so good and totally our favorite. Um, I was thinking about how it said in there that our brain loves habit, of course, and that there's so much that we do that are habitual behaviors that mm-hmm. we don't even think about mm-hmm. and how difficult it is for our mind to have to uh relearn or create new habits Mm -hmm. and then i was thinking about moving okay and when you move into a new house every single thing is a new habit yeah i have i don't i've kind of been auditioning different spots for where do I put my keys when I get home? Yeah, yes, yes. You know? Yes, yes. So it's like you're thinking like, and then I have to go, well, fuck, which spot are they in right now? You know, because nothing has a home officially. Yet. Like a lot of things have like temporary locations. Yeah, clean slate, But I'm still kind of. in like the getting rid of old furniture and replacing it with new. So yeah, it's, it's, it's do you hard feel to settled, get. settled though or is still unsettled? No, still a little unsettled. Like I feel... I think it's because not everything is all fully set up. You know, there's only one of me. And so Mm -hmm. I have to kind of pick which projects I want to do each weekend. Yeah. And then there's kind of like the order of operations. Like you don't want to put up the shelves before I paint the walls, you know, because then I'm going to have to take them down again and Mm -hmm. paint, you know. Yeah. So it's – and there are limited hours in the day. So I'm just trying to – I'm realizing now – I'm going to need to outsource things. I'm going to... My mom was so shocked that I hung that TV by myself. She was like, what? What? Why didn't you just hire... So, you know, I think I'm going to have to find a handy person. Yeah, this is something I've had to teach Adam. That, like, just because you Oh, and Adam and I are the same. Yeah, just because you are able to do something doesn't mean it's a good use of your time. This is absolutely me. Because he's like that with everything. We're both ADD. Yeah. So we do the thing that's right in front of us that we see, <laughs> right? Which tends to be the around the house, like the, you know, oh, I gotta hang those shelves because mm-hmm. that I can look at and I could see. What I can't see are the three emails I have to respond to. You need a handy woman or a handyman. Yes, like some, I know get, I do. Get somebody so over there. I would really love a woman. That would be great. Yeah, like I don't want to be like like a, a what's the word sexist in my my choosing of but <laughs> i'm going like to be against men yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think it's fine <laughs> yeah i fair fair right <laughs> Just be yeah okay with that's that. like I, I would really like to why haven't we said that yet? From now on, I'm just only working with women. Yeah, I'm discri- <laughs> I discriminate. Like, why don't I? Why haven't I just started discriminating? Because any time <laughs> I work with a man in any male-dominated profession, I'm annoyed. Yeah. Currently annoyed with the car people who <laughs> still have my car. Thank you. Like, I how do long does it take? Fault. I think I think it's the shipping problem. You know, I mean, they okay. always have to get a part. Th- that is exactly what they were waiting on, a part that was back-ordered or whatever. And then I was like, what does back-order mean? Like, are we talking back-ordered from their warehouse in Cincinnati? Or are we talking – It's I can drive down the block and get it from the neighborhood st- – you know, the, your, your 
sister store right down the street. So oh, the right. thing is that I didn't don't like is lack of communication. Yeah, they're which very I feel secretive. like would not be as big of an issue if I were dealing with a woman. That's true. And they always just say apart. They don't even say which kind. <laughs> right. Just like apart. Right. And then it makes me think, I'm like, what are you doing in the, like in there? What's happening? I need and I know that people do not have the same work. Here's here's the blessing and the curses. <laughs> yeah. My mom taught me, shout out to Sally, a really good work ethic. Like yeah. I when it when the job like like when we start the job, we're I am working and I am yeah, full steam ahead. Tireless. And I mm-hmm. am going like we're we're com- we're finishing. We're not taking breaks. We're like gonna do it and I'm, we're gonna do it fast. Yeah. When I hired movers, I start. I was like helping them out because like you know every minute counts over here. And the guy goes, "Wow, you're better than a lot of my guys." I was like, "I know that's <laughs> the problem. I'm gonna <laughs> need you to at least be better than me when this is your job." I didn't mm-hmm. say it like that, but this is what's happening inside my mind. And so, yeah, that's the blessing, the curse. When you're good at things, you also have like a high bar. That's why my goal, my, my New Year's resolution was do things that you're shitty at. But now it's like... That, you're know. like, I'm not shitty at anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's a real problem. <laughs> oh, God, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, it really, it's just like amazing. making me notice how other people are really shitty at things. No, I'm, we're learning acceptance. We're learning... Yeah, how oh, to just man. deal. So that's annoying. I don't that even is. remember what the real question was. I oh, just, do I feel you, settled? Yeah, it's <laughs> like stuff like that and why I need a handy person. I'm yeah. all over the place. Gosh. Well, you're allowed to be crabby because you're very rarely, uh, yeah. you know, obviously I'm crabby. I'm rarely crabby. Mm-hmm. But when I do get in the crabby mood, I then have a list of the, it then be go, it turns into that. Yeah. And another yeah, thing. Yeah, first of all. You know, like for like... Like, I'm annoyed. Here's what I would like to complain about something okay. since I have the since yeah. I have the mic. <laughs> you have the floor. Mm-hmm. Tap tap. Oh. Um, I hope that came up on the audio because that would make for a good joke. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I am annoyed that wow. at two o'clock in the morning or something, after like two glasses of wine and us recording like a podcast that day. Uh, I I think it was like our book club night and everything. So I was like in an extra, you know, lively wound mood. Up. Yeah. Wound up. Uh, I went online or I went on Twitter like you do. And I retweeted somebody is a, a, a hilarious tweet by <laughs> one of the um, contestants from RuPaul's Drag Race. I don't know who it was, um, but they said... The only all-star challenge I'm interested in comes with like hash browns, eggs, toast, like which yes, I is so funny, yeah. so hilarious. I was like, "That's mm-hmm. genius." Also, I totally agree. Like that, yeah. uh, like Sarah, <laughs> a breakfast joke. That's my favorite joke of the day. <laughs> the best joke of the day. Uh, mm-hmm. And um, so I retweeted. Not 24 hours later, yeah. Do I go on Twitter? Yeah. Some journalist from online people magazine yes who, I saw and this. they're just like this is nowhere in the pages of the actual magazine this isn't like anything like where oh my gosh yeah. look at wow sarah's in uh, in people magazine it is not content. that yeah it's like sarah's from the challenge response to da 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 i was like Damn, if I knew that I was like this was going into print, I would be have been a little more selective about what my official response was. I'm like, this is a 2 a.m. two glasses of wine retweet. Let's like <laughs> dial it back in the like I I just just was like real I that 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 kind of got under my skin a little bit. I'm so, and I was so just you like, didn't like that this? they were deducing your feelings about the show just from that simple retweet. It that Something as as that first of all isn't like an official statement. Yeah. Then nobody asks me. Nobody like I'm trying to make a joke. Yeah, you and just like, like retweet. a goddamn breakfast buffet. I just I just like right. I just like a joke about scrambled eggs and bacon people. <laughs> like you know, and and I I love me a good drag queen quote. Yeah. So shoot me. I <laughs> like I don't like. 
I, I just, it just is crazy to me that we live in a world yeah. where that somehow becomes article worthy when th- the thing that's nut- nuts to me is like the other s- shit that we do. Like you and I do things I in our personal life that is Matter. so, st- yes. Yeah, like, I know. Wouldn't it have been great to be like, well, and you know, furthermore, Sarah's, we actually like, do talk like about reality leading TV. A, right. Like, like Sarah's leading a workshop on trauma, you know, like <sighs> based on the things that she like, like, wouldn't that be a nice thing? Why does it have to be on a 2 a.m. retweet? Just like, don't listen to the Internet, people. It's insane and all bullshit. <laughs> Well, one good thing on the internet, I will say, is a new podcast from Wondery. It's called The Vaping Fix. So, you know, Sarah will be super into it. Um, Basically, if you or anyone you know has ever used an e-cigarette, you're going to want to hear it because they basically are telling the shocking story of how the e-cigarette company Juul yeah. They they like were supposed to be helping lifetime smokers quit, but instead it managed to hook a new generation of young people on something mm-hmm. that is also addictive. So it's just fascinating. Anytime like you have a podcast that's sort of like re like it shifts your understanding yes. of a subject, I think that's super fun. See now there's important information. Yes. Definitely yeah. article worthy uh-huh. and <laughs> story worthy yeah so follow the vaping fix on amazon music apple podcasts or you can also listen early and ad free by starting your free trial of wondry plus in the wondry app um and check out the vaping fix man yeah all right so yeah that's what i'm a little worked up over today but you know i hear you i mean the i have not i've clearly not made peace about all the reality stuff um each week I find there – and I said this to Sarah earlier, yeah. previously. I noticed that things are ramping up. I think it's yeah. because of like the OG challenge and then the like real world homecoming. Like I think ca- former cast members that had sort of put it to bed mm-hmm. are kind of getting this sense of like, oh, maybe I'll do it, do it again. And then it just causes this percolation of nice. drama. Mm-hmm. And I was noticing this after our last few Q and A's, just different issues with cast members who didn't like things we said and blah blah blah. And I just thought, I am just not cut out for this line of work. I don't think very many people are. Yeah. I think that people don't understand what's involved in this. Even the people who are challengers or contestants from back in the day when things maybe were a little bit different or not as um uh you're not as exposed right or or it didn't used to bleed into your real life yes like once you were done filming you just went back to normal life right and then social media changed that yes and i think that the being able to go back to normal life is something some people can do. There are exceptions. There are people who I think have really good support systems, who have very um, uh, strong identities away from the challenge. Yeah. I think when your identity is wrapped up or linked or heavily uh, reliant on the challenge to, like, I don't know, tell you who you are. Yeah. Yeah. that uh then it can be very difficult for people to adjust or even have um feel like they're in control of that identity yeah anytime especially so like if your identity is wrapped in it that's not great and then if your value hinges upon it yes oh lord Yes. Then, then, yes. Yes. Then yes. Yes. If they don't get invited, then they have this self doubt right. and this sense of like, I, I'm nobody now. I don't matter. Yes. All of that. Exactly. It's just, yes. <sighs> your value, your worth, who you are, is is related, like tied up and wrapped up in the challenge, and and that is very dangerous because it's all out of your control and it's all 
for entertainment's sake. Yeah, it's so not going to be a peaceful life. So it's not going to be, right. Mm -mm. It's not, and, you know, I was so, I wasn't shocked. That's not the right word. I just thought it was really interesting and curious that, you know, another tweet I put up that, um, yeah. so, you know, people kept asking, like, you know, are you going to go back and do the OG challenge? Like, you should totally do it. It's, it's like, so easy. It's like summer camp for grownups. And I totally understand what people are saying. They watch it. Yeah, I get you. It looks, those challenges, I, I could crush them all. Thanks, guys. I, I really love that <laughs> sure, you guys are like, saying I that. I totally am with you. <laughs> but I tweeted and I said, you know, it's so interesting that people think the 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 hardest part of the challenges are the actual challenges. Yeah, that's not what's holding us back. Nope. And then somebody tweeted back and they were like, yeah, you're right. We know it's the other cast members. And I was like, Mm -mm. nope, that ain't it either. (laughs) And I was like, wow, that's really fascinating. Yeah, but people listening are going to want to know what it is. They won't know the answer. And that to me is the really interesting part, that there is a big disconnect between the viewers and their experience, of course, because it's so different and Mm -hmm. what the challenger, what the the person on television actually experiences. And the the most difficult part is that identity stuff and is being so exposed and is having things like a tweet that you put out at two o'clock in the morning become part of an article that then makes you feel very, um, it makes you feel like there's a need to be cautious or yeah. uh, hyper vigilant of anything else you say absolutely and if you are monitoring your language monitoring your behavior being hyper vigilant of of whatevs because of other people yeah that will absolutely affect your mental health and well-being yes 100 percent. no ifs ands or buts because that's not being authentic and that's that will cause anxiety or depression well, like, one of the two well, that retweet that you put out that was just silly and then yeah. turned into an article, there's an incongruity there in in terms of like what you thought you were saying and then yes. what was portrayed. It put all yes. this weight in something that you just put out flippantly. Mm-hmm. And then yep. that feels, can be scary. Yes. <laughs> because you're Seriously. like, ah, this was no big deal. <laughs> I had so many thoughts. Like it was the next morning and I looked, I opened that up before I had like a big old work day and I'm like going to go talk to clients. And luckily I am, um, I have great awareness and I was able to have the perspective and see this and, and recognize what was going on internally with me and where my thoughts went. And whenever that happens, I always put somebody else in my position who maybe wouldn't have that awareness. Yeah. And I think, wow, this is how I feel. And look at, I, and I'm, you know, because this is what I practice doing and, you know, it's like just a muscle you have to build up and all of you people listening can do this too. When I have a feeling, then I have the awareness of the feeling, that metacognition. As soon as the feeling comes up, I go, oh, this is a feeling. I wonder Mm. what this feeling is about. And then I have like the feeling about the feeling where it's like, oh my gosh, I'm like shocked that I have this feeling. And so like there's a lot of like, uh, you know, analyzing the situation going on and then thinking about like that t- it's it's not an easy thing to do. And mm-hmm. if I didn't do that, I can absolutely see how my the rest of my day may be affected. Yeah. And how you'd just be in that hypervigilant mindset where you'd be monitoring everything you say or thinking like the next tweet that I put out, I definitely thought about in a different way. Right. And that is a, a weird thing to, mm-hmm. to, to, for about bullshit. Yeah. It's, and it's not worth it because it doesn't enhance your life. It's not no. like tweeting is somehow crucial. No. So then you just don't do like it. thinking I'm being right. Yeah. Right. And so it's just interesting. It's just something. And this is the thing that I think gets lost because it's, it's difficult for people to, for people who have been on the challenge to be able to, or any reality show. Yeah. To be able to speak out about this because they get exactly what you talk about so often, Susie, that pushback of like, 
well, you should be grateful yeah. or look at all the wonderful things that came from yeah. it. So, and, and they are grateful. And there's this, there's when, and our brain like struggles between those two different truths, you know? And so it just feels like, do I even have the right to say these things and to talk about this? And that's why I think it's so important to have mental health support for people who have been on these shows just out of like ethical and moral like obligation because people don't know that they need it. People don't know that this is affecting them. They just will will just see the symptoms. People aren't going to come and say, you know, I've really been like questioning my identity and who I am and like my value as a person. And I'm noticing that I'm becoming more isolated and that I'm starting to like, uh, uh, what? they don't say that. No. So like what I, it, it, it's really, I can see it happening and it just feels like I'm watching a, 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 I'm like, I'm watching a car accident happen and like, here I am selling a really good brake system. <laughs> right. Like, wow. But, like, really wish you guys would be using the system. I'm the braking system. I'm trying to talk to you about as we're watching the car accident where the brakes don't work. <laughs> well, and even this conversation, some people will be offended by. Why? Well, just because it's that sense of like, why are they always complaining about it? They got money from it. This and like, isn't a complaint. No. This, I want to make that super clear <laughs> for anybody who may be confused by that. This is a reality. Yeah, this is just observing this things is that are observing. actually happening. That is all. And things can be both good and bad. Good and bad are judgments. Mm-hmm. Some things just are. And what's good for one person is not – that is subjective. What's good for one is not good for the other. What's bad for one is not bad for the other. It's all different. So we have to, like, just look at it at the facts. Yeah. End of lecture. Well, the fact of the matter is that whether you're mad about reality TV or not, you're going to want to, you know, have a delicious, refreshing, summery drink. Thanks to oh, Huzzah, yes. I'm making it easy for you. Mm. I can taste it right now. Yeah. (laughs) So yummy. These are probiotic seltzers that are so delicious and very, like I said, refreshing and summery. Raspberry and lemon, strawberry and hibiscus, juicy pear, all yummy flavors, but they only have three grams of sugar and 15 calories. Hello. Hello. Great mixers too. I'm just saying. Yeah. Um... They're great for diving into summer, and I know you guys are getting out the old barbecues, so add a little huzzah to your celebrations. Get your cooler ready and stuck up on huzzah probiotic seltzer Mm -hmm. by using code BRAINCANDY for 20% off your order at drinkhuzzah.com. That's code BRAINCANDY for 20% off at drinkhuzzah.com. Love it. That pear one Mm, definitely reminds me of like a summer picnic. I want it right now. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I had like other things. <coughs> oh, tickle. <coughs> you need a huzzah too. right now. I do. I do. I am feeling like I, that whole speech got, gave me dry <laughs> mouth. And uh, you know what's funny is I do have wa- a beverage in front of me, but it's sparkling water. And I didn't want to open it because it would make that noise. And I was like, people are going to be like, what's that? But now I can do it. Ready? <laughs> yeah, now uh, you can. Okay. There you go. And then I didn't want people to think, is she drinking a soda? Because I am not. No way. And drinking my, but I wouldn't judge you if you did. Yeah, like, just not for me. Yeah, mm. yeah. So you, the whole show isn't going to be just us like complaining no. about. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> okay. Um. So you often give your documentary roundup. Oh my god! Um, yes. Do you I have don't. One? Which I I don't have a documentary to tell you about. But oh my god, Suze, I just <laughs> started and finished. The best show. Why did it take me so long to watch this? It's every single thing I love. Pose on FX. Pose? I don't even know <gasps> that show. Ah! It's so good. It is about the underground ballroom scene, which is all 
queer and amazing and wonderful in the 80s and 90s. Wow. Yes, like the Vogue scene. I didn't even it know there is, was an underground. Oh my gosh, ballroom. this is so amazing. Suze, I'm about to blow your mind with like, you have, okay, then I am going to introduce you to a documentary because that's where this really all started. There's an amazing documentary that I saw years ago. Um, Frank from the challenge, he recommended it to me. We did a challenge together and like hit it off like crazy. And you know, I was, I don't know what we were talking about, but he's like, oh my God, you will love this documentary. It's called Paris is Burning. Have you seen this? I have heard of this. Suze, it's so good. So you have to see Paris is Burning first. So you get all the background. Okay. And then you have to watch Pose. I know you're going to love it. It's really? by the same guy who did American Horror Story. Yeah. And, oh, he's so amazing. I can picture that. Okay. Mark, Mark something. Cherry? I love him. Is it Mark mm, Cherry? Something similar to that. I don't know. But, and I even had it last night. I was like thinking about this and like, you know how I am with names. And I was like, okay, and I'm going to say this. <laughs> oh, but then, and yeah, no, I don't remember. Um, what do you like about it? Okay, so there. First of all, there's so much that is beautiful and amazing about it. Um, so it really started to give people who are transgendered a space, a right. space to be authentic, a space to um, oh Ryan be Murphy recognized Ryan Murphy. That's it. Oh, where, Mark, I was way off. Um, a space to be recognized, a, pay, a space to be seen and be beautiful. Yeah. So it, it's a – what's the best way to describe it? So um, it's like a contest, a show, a performance. It probably takes place monthly. I would imagine monthly or every few months or something like that. And there are different houses. So – the community of people who are involved in the like, ballroom community are all – well, mostly. I don't know if it's all because you know, whatever. But like queer, transgendered, um, often – like almost always people of color. So people who really did not have any space, yeah, the especially – the, the other, mm-hmm. especially in you know 70s, 80s, 90s. And so – the and I really wish I knew the history of how it really like started. I'm sure that was in Paris mm-hmm. is burning, but I I had I didn't watch it yet. Um, again, I haven't. I want I want to rewatch it, but I've been too busy catching up on episodes of Pose. It's so good. So um, so the houses will be one elder, one like older person who's usually called a house mother or house father, and they basically take in any youth who's kicked out of their home, who doesn't mm. have a place to live, who's homeless, who's maybe in the sex work, sex industry, and they provide them a family. And they are family. And yeah. moms are mothers. Oh, my God, I'm going to cry talking about it. It's the best. Mm. Isn't it's it so beautiful? beautiful when, like, yes. I mean, even sitcoms, like, you know, I love Cheers. That's That's a family, even though it's not a family. Like... These close knit chosen yes. families are, especially in these kinds of communities, yes. are so important. And you just see how people like stick up for each other, defend each other, and, and that space is safe. And yeah. then they show so beautifully in that show how there really was no space no. for people who are trans. Please, I mean, we haven't come that like, far still. Uh, it's it's so you know there was a scene where. She's trying to to just have a drink with her girlfriend, and so she goes to a gay bar, thinking like you know the gay bar at least they're gay. They at least you know, we're we're on the same team here, guys. And they throw her out and just throw like beat her up, and because they're like th- we don't want women at our bar, and you make mm. everybody uncomfortable. Like I'm I watch every episode and cry. I'm oh, like, you're oh. like emotionally invested. <laughs> That's so it's, nice. It's, oh, my God, yes. It's so good. The dancing's fantastic. The moves are amazing. They're all so talented. And Ryan Murphy did such a good job making this an inclusive cast. Everybody who's trans, oh, shocker, is played by somebody who's actually trans. Right. Like, that's, like, imagine. a really novel idea. Like, imagine that. Can I and, make a, one trans yes, yes. Uh, observation? I... You know, I'm very happy for Elliot Page and his, um, you know, coming out as a trans man. Mm -hmm. And 
was watching clips of him on Oprah, and I just want to say, like, somebody needs to help him with that hair, though. Uh, just, like, <laughs> what? Did you see it? I I did. Okay, so here's a theory, and this okay. was not a theory that was thrown around. I don't know if it applies. I did not come up with this. This was uh, something that I discussed with somebody who is trans, and they said okay. that... People who are trans often miss the time in their life where they get to be, like, playful or or experiment with, like, looks. and like. So they do that when they finally get to. And often it can be a a younger look just because they're, like, waiting to have that hairstyle that they've always wanted. (laughs) Waiting to wear that look that they always wanted to wear. And so it's... It could be something like that because don't you feel like it was kind of youthful and like little boy, like Justin Bieber? Yeah, I do. So like, it's like the exact haircut that I think you'd want if you were like a 17, 16 year old boy. Yeah. So maybe she's just wants that. He. Yeah. Oh, he. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. But yeah, I think you're right. And I, but I want to be like Elliot. Yes. Like that is not the flattering haircut for you. Right. Well, I'm sure that he has friends who are going to do that. Well, and maybe he thinks, so what? Fuck you, Suze. Right. And that's probably. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> As you should. Like, Shut up. Yep. But I Absolutely. said that to my friend the other night. I'm like, oh, Elliot's hair is not, it's not good. Because I, I yeah, think I is... think about like, I'm always saying this to Lincoln. He always wants these terrible haircuts. And I'm just oh. like, why? What is, I, they yeah. need a woman to come in and be like, <laughs> yeah, I got you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't we? Don't we all? Yeah. Sometimes right. I think I need a gay man to come in and help me with that. Well, we do. We need that that's, a little more. That's correct. Golly. Yeah. So but I it's will wonderful check that and out. amazing. That is a good recommendation. You have to. It's so good, and the cast is. I believe it's a hundred and sixty something trans cast and crew. Which wow. is more than fifty percent. I I screenshot the because I looked it up. I was like, I have well, to. Well, good. That is so I great. Know. Good, good, good. Uh, da, da, da. Um, oh my god! I like stopped and looked at another text message that just popped up from a client, Who was it? <laughs> and I like went into well, it's for client text message, oh, but I like okay. went into all of a sudden my mind like totally escaped and went somewhere else. So I apologize for that like two seconds where I was like disappeared uh, as I was just talking to you there. Um, Sorry. But yeah, 140 trans actors and crew members on the show and 35 LGBTQ characters who aren't trans, representing more than half of the total cast and crew. That's fantastic. That's got to be a first for a major show yeah for sure for sure yeah, right for sure. Mm-hmm. and let me tell you these women are so fucking beautiful oh i believe like, that oh my god they're so gorgeous <laughs> so it's just like amazing and you have to watch it and i think the show does such a good job like from also from a mental health perspective it did a really good job showing different like real mental health issues you know they talk a lot about hiv and aids they Mm -hmm. talk a lot about like everything that they show in the show a lot of it really happened there it lines up with like actual characters oh and it's just really cool so definitely check out paris is burning and definitely check out pose and basically like the whole entire underground ballroom dance scene because it's it's what inspired madonna's vogue it's right. all vogue yeah yes and everybody knows these moves it's it's you and as i was watching this i was just thinking i'm like wow this is everything in pop culture right now that we've totally stolen from like <laughs> right. appropriated from like yeah. you know the queer population and like just we just take take take. You know what then, would probably be great for them to dance in is some Rothies. Oh my! So, oh my God! I love love my new lace up sneakers. Yes, I am a huge fan of them. They're so comfortable, and any pair of sneakers that I can live in and then wash them, and yeah. they will turn out sparkly, brand new, 
Not like when you put them in the washer and they get kind of weird because you're not really supposed to do that. Absolutely. These are actually supposed to be washed. Yep. I, it's It truly is amazing. I've had my white pair for years and years and they're still totally white because you can wash them and they, you know, keep smelling nice. And um, they make masks. That's now Adam's favorite mask. Um, it fits him perfectly. They have bags. These are all made out of recycled plastic. Extremely durable. They last wash after wash, and they always have like new colors and patterns and stuff. So it's great to check out their inventory, even if you've done it before, because they have new stuff all the time. Keep it clean with washable shoes and bags from Rothy's. Head to rothys.com slash brain candy to find your new favorites today. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash brain candy. I just love that they're um, a sustainable company. Yes. That's wonderful. They would be good shoes to dance in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they mm-hmm. would. They mm-hmm. really would. Yes. Have I have been, been enjoying... Some... Go ahead. What, what were you going to say? I was going to say, have you been enjoying the dancing content from my son on my Instagram? Oh my God. That video was so funny. And then when you pan <laughs> over and it's it's Adam doing the Getting air keyboard. It. I mean, I, I just am really sad that i'm not there playing with you guys i know i need to just i just need to like i don't know throw Bo in the car and just come across the country and just drive there bite the bullet get over here Mm -hmm. i just really miss you it's been so long since we've had a hug i know this is the longest in years and years oh i can't even that that was not on my list of things to talk about but yeah (sighs) sorry oh i have a story that will terrify you this might be yes. like one of your worst nightmares. Is it spooky? D- it, not spooky. More along the lines of like... Nightmare. N- nightmare. Okay. Okay. So, you know, we've talked about these. You know those glass bridges? Oh, yes. Do you know the story I'm going to no. tell No. Okay. I <laughs> love that your reaction though. is already like that. And you, oh, Jesus, I love that. Jesus, okay. I hate these things. Right. We already said this was a bad idea. Bad, Didn't we say that like 5,000 times? We were like, A-W-H. They, it really is an A-W-H. Yes, Accident I'm telling you, Susie. To that, Wait. I'm so glad that I introduced Me too. the Brain Candy family to this acronym because now <laughs> you get to see why it's so necessary to have in your, in a, uh, uh, <laughs> In the repertoire. Oh, it's so. true. It's, it, you need it. So you can just be what like, what oh, happened? A-W-H. And Is then it, it summarizes everything. Ugh, I'm palpitating. Wouldn't that, be, wouldn't that be a nice thing if it were just cracking? So oh, no. This is in China. It's in uh, Pion Mountains. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Or Pion or Pion Mountain. There is a bridge, and it's one of mm. those long ass glass bridges. It's three hundred meters long and two and a half meters wide. Mm. And this, I want to know how thick it is. That's what I. That's the measurement oh I God, need. <laughs> that's a really good question. So, like these bridges are popping up, you know, all over the place, yeah, and they're please. they're trying to attract people, with, like who are. Oh, I want to like take a walk, like be do something no. terrifying and scary. So they're already doing things to make it seem even more right. terrifying. So they're even putting, um, they're like sections of the glass that when you step on it, it makes a pretend crack. So it looks like it's going to crack. And what? Fall off. So I love that you're already terrified about that. <laughs> you're already terrified about the the fake crack. So he's like fake crack. Well, because that's that, insane. That you I'm out. Know Crazy that there's story, a real Sarah. Crack. Sarah. Right. Okay. So oh, this this guy, and it you you pay sixteen dollars and you get to walk across this bridge. Oh yeah. Okay. So right. So you know they it, they I don't know how many people were were ahead or behind him uh, when this happened, but this guy's walking across. All of a sudden, Mm-mm. and it probably, I, I can't imagine that this was an all of a sudden thing. I think there might be a little bit of a build up where maybe people at the gate should have been like, uh, sorry, bridge is closed. The wind, <laughs> the wind started to pick up. Okay. It turned into 73 to 92 mile an hour winds. Oh my God. That blew the entire glass off of the bridge. No. He got trapped hanging on to just the railing because the floor beneath him blew away in a category one hurricane wind. 
No. No, terrifying. Could you imagine? Here you are paying your hard-earned money to walk across no. this glass bridge and the four f- floor fucking blows away. No. That's a nightmare. It's unacceptable. Now, I didn't know what what is so terrifying is when we discover new things for me to be scared of. <laughs> right. Like right. I you was scared of those here. bridges for them A breaking, B cracking (laughs) see me falling off the edge i did not want to add the fourth of floor blowing away (laughs) right wind wind i didn't know like oh my god that makes my toes curl just thinking could you imagine you're walking across the bridge and there's like that moment where it shakes loose and you're like that couldn't is there a video of it or no there is a photo of him clinging to the side for dear life though and the before and after of what it looks like with a floor and without a floor. Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm like cho- I'm getting like 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 nervous oh just thinking god, about that. Oh my god! I see that. the Brit. I see mm-hmm. it. Are you kidding me? As soon as that came up, I was like, I have to tell Susie about this. This is terrifying. How did they yeah. get him off? Oh, I don't know. He was trapped there for a few hours, though. Sarah, I know. That is sick. <laughs> I'm, I'm only laughing i'm not laughing at the thing i'm laughing whenever Susie gets like this <laughs> like i get like serious. it yeah we're just like that is sick like i just like <laughs> when i'm it gives me joy when i find a story that gets to do that that you get to react like that to that is, it's it. just uh i know I ain't going on any of those bridges. A-W-H. A-W-H. So I've got to be on the lookout. Yeah, you got, I don't know. It's more fun to say <laughs> like that. Oh, God. So there's God. your story of things to things to be terrified about. Um, God, another one so that uh, a, a terrifying experience that maybe had an a interesting outcome. So there was a, a case. And the part I don't understand really, well, we'll talk about it later, is why this what happened in the actual case but there it it happened about five years ago there was a guy who was surfing and he got attacked by a shark and the shark bit the surfboard bit his leg played with him for a little bit Mm -hmm. and the guy passed out in the water he like lost consciousness he was he was comatose for three to four days wow lost his leg thank god that the lifeguards you know saw him and they dragged him shore he ended up losing his leg the surf he got his surfboard back and the surfboard had the shark's tooth stuck in it okay. so the people who were investigating the the accident or i don't know the fit, like department of wildlife or whatever it was whoever was dealing with them <laughs> they took the tooth and and rather than just like you know i don't leaving it with the guy or whatever they took <laughs> it and they like i don't know as as evidence or something like that well apparently it is illegal to sell, purchase, or possess any part of endanger of an endangered species. Okay. And this guy really, really, really wanted the tooth. So he went so and he kept <laughs> on victim? request Yes. The okay. guy who lost his leg. He figured fair trade. Yeah. Like, you got my leg, I'll get your tooth. Yeah. We'll call it even. Yeah. Well, not the the Department of Wildlife or whoever it was. It's down in Australia. Was like, nope, nope, nope. He kept on rec- like asking for it. Like, please, can I have the tooth? Please, please. They were wow. just keeping it there. They're like, the shark, he, the shark d- already lost his tooth. I already lost my. Nobody's getting anything back. Can mm-hmm. I just have it? And they refused to give it to him. So a lawyer got involved, and they went to court. <laughs> and the guy just last week won the tooth back. Wow. Yeah. What was their uh, argument? Do you know? That's the part I don't know. Yeah. This was an uh, – so – and I looked at three different articles that, and thought <laughs> something was going to tell me a little more about yeah. like – The legal like, standing. The legal <laughs> story of it or like why. They they did say it was the first time that they've ever made a decision to like on the side of the – not the Fisheries Management Act. Yeah. Because usually right. it's like a breach of that is like a two year in prison, like hundred thousand dollar. Yeah. What, and what like, kind of shark is in endangered board. though? Is that a stupid question? I didn't even oh, know. No. Where, I, know I think that that that's a really good question. We have to protect them and everything, but I didn't know they were actually sometimes uh, endangered. Let me see if it says. Oh, a great white. 
Oh, I didn't know they were endangered. Oh, golly, an 18-foot great white shark. I mean, he, he said, deserves yeah, that tooth. I think so, too. That's what I'm saying. It's like these things, I'm like, why is this even a question? Why does he want it, though, for real? Also, to an important question. Maybe it like, was, like, I've, em- emotional. But then again, like, I, I had a little bump on my ear. <laughs> Yeah, and like my, we always referred to it as my lucky bump when I was oh. little growing up. I would be like, "Oh, hang on, I gotta like let me rub my lucky bump." It was like right on the side of my ear, <laughs> and I would like I would call it my lucky bump. I can't believe we've never talked about this. Have I not <laughs> talked about this on here? I'm really starting to think you make this shit up as you go. I swear, <laughs> I am not making this up. This is this is definitely a real story. Oh okay. my god, it's so funny that so I had it was like a little it it's like a mole. It looked like a mole but white, like like the same color as my skin. Mm-hmm. And and like we would just joke and you know that I would it was like my lucky bump and when I was born my mom saw it on me because I'd been there since I was born it's like a birthmark or whatever and she like freaked out she's like what is that and the doctor told her it was left over from when I was a fish and had gills and she was Stop. like like in like just had a baby and like had a C section so she's all hopped up on drugs or whatever jokes. And so she was like, oh, okay, and, like, believed it for a bit. So she then started telling me that joke when I was little. She would always say, like, oh, you're a Pisces, and, like, that's from when you were a fish and had gills, and that's why you're such a good swimmer. So I'd be like, I'm the best swimmer. Look at my gills. So then it became, like, my lucky bum. That's it was cool. Thing. Yeah. So then it started giving me a little bit of, like, pain. Like, it felt like like – kind of painful so the doctor said like just in case let's just remove it and so my mom was like i have to come with you i'm devastated like she was like sad about it she's like i made that that's like part of and they're getting rid of it and she asked the doctor if she could keep it she didn't she did and she has it no, the doctor was like, "Ma'am, oh. this is a, a this is a biological contaminant. Like, like this is like live, like or like you know now it's dead." I flesh. feel like so, you like, should be able to keep away. it. And well, that was her argument. She was like, "Why?" She's like, "I made it. It's technically mine." I was like, mm, "Pretty sure it becomes mine when I yeah, can. like I do. I, uh, I upon birth. I don't like this rule that you. If let's say they did take that guy's leg too, he should be able to keep that if he fucking wants it. Remember that story about the leg that you. Wasn't there a documentary about a leg? Was, oh my I'm god, this... yes. What was that I still called? haven't seen that. What was that called? Oh my god, that was awesome. And it was about like buying and trading a leg or like Yeah. A fake what leg though. That oh oh wasn't it, was it fake. a prosthetic? Let's hope. I don't know. Now I'm wondering. <laughs> right now I wonder That's too. funny that the stories are, have all uh, – uh, that's why it's always important to like brush up on thing, things for, like stories from the past because in my memory, this was a real leg. So, so like, when you remove a leg or whatever, it just turns into the same as if you died, right? It just curls up and turns into weirdness. Curls up, Seuss. It's not the Wizard of Oz. This isn't the the Wicked Witch of the West and the Wizard of Oz. Right? Okay, yeah, but like curls up, it makes me think of the toes on the house, you know, and like the, the, when the house falls on the Wicked Witch and the toes yeah. go like. That's exactly it what I picture. Does, like though. you cut off the leg and it just goes. And like, <laughs> oh my god! I don't even care if this is just you and me laughing about this. That is such People a funny are visual. So annoyed with us today. That is such a funny visual. Oh god! Listen, so guys, yes, just bear with us. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I and I feel like we keep that's. You know what's funny? You can keep human teeth, but you can't keep shark teeth. Yeah. Right. That seems like it doesn't make sense. And what it so in. This feels like spirit of the law versus letter of the law. Yeah, because isn't 100%. the whole reason you're not allowed to have these body parts of endangered species so that you don't kill them and then keep right. stuff? Correct. So I feel maybe- like when it goes the other way and they're trying to kill you, you, you get <laughs> yeah, they to forfeit keep whatever. Their they, yes, you get to keep whatever they leave behind. Right. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, he said that uh, he keeps the tooth in a case at his house. He wanted to show his grandchildren, and he takes it to motivational talks that he gives about uh, his attack. Wow! Did you see it? Is it big? Yes. Oh my god! But they god. didn't. They didn't put it in scale with anything else. Like it's uh-huh. just a, they didn't. It's like on a wooden table, so it's hard to tell. I could have used a quarter next to it, you know, just for oh, right. Just put that a hand nice. there. Because it looks huge, but also it could be tiny. I don't know. 
But I feel like <laughs> sharks also have a lot of teeth, so they can like spare a few. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that worked out yes. kind of. Yeah, kind of. Um, By okay. the way, that me, woman, yes, remember well, Bethany, that, that woman that lost her arm in a shark attack? Yes, yeah. She follows us on Twitter. <gasps> Get out of town! <clears throat> yeah, she does. Maybe she's listening right now. Well, hey, Beth. <laughs> Bethany? <laughs> we have some questions about surfing, sharks, and the Australian Wildlife Act. And, and curling up body parts. And, and what happens. Yes. Yeah. That's badass. Yeah, she's awesome. I love us. She I loves love her. Jesus. She seems like a really nice, indomitable spirit. Yeah. So, hello, Bethany, if you're listening. So, it's, yeah. in, uh, it's very... Um, uh, it's interesting that all a lot of the people who, or maybe not interesting, I don't know, uh, that a lot of people who get attacked by sharks and sur- survive yeah. do that motivational speaking thing, which makes me think, are surfers inherently like yeah. that? Resilient or something. Resilient. Or, well, like, and she was or back out on the board experience. like two yeah. seconds later. Right. And that's what I'm like thinking in my mind that what it takes to be a surfer. Yeah. It's definitely like the actual definition of the sport is getting beaten down by a wave and getting back up. <laughs> right. That is, I just summarized surfing for you. Yeah. That, and it's like, it's a, of course that metaphor holds up for like real life or that, you know. Yeah. They're always like, what, what's the big deal? And then they're back out on their board. Yes. Which is why I say but uh, that same thing. Who is it that Jerry, Jerry Seinfeld says, don't, you don't ever have to worry about skateboarders as long as they don't get into drugs. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Now, Cause, oh, yeah. I bet you these surfers would be like, I'm not fucking getting on that glass bridge. Right. Well, because they're, not, they're not dummies. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. They're oh, not falling for gosh. that crap. Not falling for that crap. Oh, mm-hmm. thank you for this excellent segue. Yes. Uh, I don't know if this is a story I shared before. It was in my notes, but I didn't cross it out. So if I did share it, I'll, I th- you're welcome for the little reminder. If I haven't mm-hmm. shared it yet. You're welcome for new information. Okay. Remember how there was that croissant that we thought was yeah. a... <laughs> that uh, was stuck that, in the that tree. was a monster? Yeah. There was another mysterious item that was found that people were very worried about. An unexploded grenade. Oh, that well, that's reasonable. Totally reasonable. So people were like, definitely stay away from it. It's really dangerous. We got to call on the bomb squad. And mm-hmm. so they had people come in and investigate and, and get it. Don't worry. It was just a butt plug. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> no. Ah, so I have not told that story out here what yet. What color so was it? Black and looked exactly oh, like okay. a grenade, which well, yeah. make it, makes me ask a lot of questions. <laughs> Who's into that? Sarah. Oh what? my god. Isn't That's that funny? Fantastic. I want to I want to I'm going to find the picture of it that I have. It's, this has been uh, this I I don't even know where this article went. So I but I was like I have got to share that with Sue's that <laughs> the unexploded grenade was cuz that's funny. You know everybody who lives in the cause I like thinking about all of the other stuff. Like mm-hmm. you know like creating the narrative of like what's going on in that neighborhood wherever that, that <laughs> is happening. So yeah. somebody discovers it mm-hmm. and then you know that like if somebody found an unexploded grenade in my neighborhood in my on my little cul-de-sac and the bomb squad came in and they were like Every neighbor is coming out and is going to want to know what the hell is going on. Yeah. So every neighbor is going to be asking follow-up questions about what happened, what, what. And the fact that every neighbor gets to hear, oh, no, don't worry. It was just a butt plug. It's the best I will, ever. Right. And, like, wouldn't you love to be there when they figured it out, whoever it yes. was? Yes. Like, oh, <laughs> this is just a butt plug. It's fine. Uh. I would, and then that's a funny story because what if the person from the bomb squad was like, "Oh no, I see these all the time." Yeah. That's another one of the butt Classic plugs. Throw it in the pile, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh gosh, I couldn't have thought of another name. I just was talking about Jerry Seinfeld. And Jerry, priming does too. Oh, okay, but that wow. was my little, my little. That my was little, awesome. My Let's little. Wind it down uh, though. After uh, that tasty treat to end on up yeah Yeah. (laughs) tasty treat well we learned that 
Sarah, you know, she's been having some tough times <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> this is probably what you're like, this is See, why I don't tweet. For, yeah, it's exactly why. Yeah. T- uh, not tough times on Twitter, which no. sounds really fun to say. Um, more like interesting observations from Twitter. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I have feelings about Twitter. Instead of tweeting, she'll just watch Pose on FX. Yes. And, and you guys should too. The dancing. But I'll stay the hell off of Glass Bridges Absolutely. as we all should. Because, you know, AWH people. And <laughs> WH. Yeah. And uh And if you take my leg, I get your tooth. Right. Trade for trade fair trade. Yeah, all right. Yeah. We've covered a lot of ground today. Yeah. Thanks for listening, guys. Don't forget to check out our merch. There's always some new stuff oh, in there that yes. Sarah's been whipping up and it's yeah. really fun and does help the show so much. Anytime you use our codes or sponsors, yes. please let us know because that helps us too. And we uh, love tell it. a friend. Thank you so much. We love you guys. Bye, 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 bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that show. You got this far, so you must be a hardcore podcast fan. We'd love to invite you over to our podcast, Twinning at Life. We'll be gossiping about relationships. Yes, ours included. Bachelor chatter, pop culture, reality TV, and really a bunch of real life stuff. Come join us and have some fun. Just search Twinning at Life on your podcast app.